Thank you, Sasha, and uh, thank you very much, Teresa, for inviting me. Um, yeah, I'm going to present uh, uh, my latest project, which is titled uh, Hybrid Family. Actually, I finished it, I just finished it actually two days ago, so uh, that is why I needed to bring my uh, newborn baby, and probably during this talk I will have to breastfeed her also, so yeah, be prepared to, no, I'm kidding. Um, so, uh, yeah, and I'm also sitting because, yeah, it's, it's just better. Uh, <laughs> so maybe it will even work for her to be here for half an hour. So, yeah, in all my, actually, no, I will, I will start like this. Um, hybrid family is the third one, uh, the third project in the quadro, uh, quadrology of the series of projects uh, which carry the uh, umbrella title uh, canine topology. And uh, within these projects I am, um, um, as an artist, um, uh, who is trying to connect um, the intersections of um, humanistic and natural uh, sciences into the interdisciplinary projects. Uh, I am uh, within the canine topology uh, researching uh, parallel evolution between uh, humans, uh, between wolves, humans, and dogs, if I am correct, evolutionary. Um, so, but also in all of my projects, I'm always very much interested to kind of. Um, not kind of, but to actually comment and react to the um, different uh, biopolitical dynamics of the zeitgeist. And since the zeitgeist which we are living in, uh, maybe all, uh, maybe it's probably been like this for every intelligent uh, subject to think about whichever sub, uh, whichever zeitgeist, but uh, uh, also it happens to me that uh, I think that we are living in a very, very, very crazy zeitgeist full of uh, um, paradoxes and yeah, it's really hard. So. Um, in hybrid family, I, I had I, I, this urge to actually um, resist some levels of, of the pressures that I am feeling uh, have uh, really grown very strong. So I've been um, I, I, I really kind of wanted to uh, um, um, uh, resist uh, um, the, the the system of. Uh, the system of uh, uh, liberal capitalism, <laughs> so, um, which is actually ruling our whole umwelt. So yesterday we've been talking about the umwelt of uh, animals, but actually the umwelt of humans and also all the other uh, kingdoms of life, I think, is actually being ruled absolutely and totally by the different uh, uh, levels of the um, uh, uh, liberal uh, capitalism and it's being ruled down to our every last molecule. This is how I feel. So uh, this is obviously a very um, biopolitical um, discourse and of course I've been uh, very much um, among other discourses, I've been very much inspired by the uh, essay of um, Gatari and Deleuze uh, becoming animal, and amongst um, many other things, uh, uh, um, they say that um, becoming animal is actually a very subtle, subconscious process. It's a vet process, but uh, above all, it's a molecular process. So therefore, I've been thinking um, to connect all of the needs and researches that I've done and also to kind of um, interconnect together all the projects within the, the past projects and future projects within the canine topology series, I decided I would like to um, uh, breastfeed uh, a dog 
uh, to get a new puppy and uh, breastfeed, try to breastfeed it. So how would I do that um, uh, on a molecular level? Um, uh, I would, uh, this is her first time outside in public, so yeah, <laughs> she's not really socialized. Okay, so I was, uh, I submitted myself, I mean, after doing uh, quite a lot of research, I submitted myself, uh, it turned out that if uh, one submits um, oneself to the, um, as much as isolation as possible uh, in the um, environment that would be um, kind of um, supporting and uh, uh, um, uh, pumping um, uh, uh, pumping breasts um, every three hours uh, uh, for 20 minutes also during the day. I did that for almost three months. I submitted myself to a, a diet which was basically very rich in iron and uh, I had to be very much hydrated, uh, uh, preferably with the uh, beverages that would uh, contain um, spices which are galactogogs. These are the spices that uh, are, galactogogs are actually the, um, well, they have the specifics which actually uh, encourage the metabolism of uh, dopamine to actually start working um, uh, much more intensively by uh, triggering um, a breast by um, a breast pumping so much. The uh, uh, the met this method actually um, is at the same time uh, by triggering from the outside the breast. Uh, actually, I was triggering the um, uh, pituitary gland in my amygdala, which would, uh, by getting this trigger, actually then send the information to the metabolism of the uh, um, uh, of the uh, hormone serotonin. Uh, not serotonin, sorry, uh, prolactin, uh, which would then start to um, accumulate. So prolactin, that is the hormone which is actually in charge when accumulating uh, that is uh, a product of that is actually lactation, so having milk in breast. But she's probably going to have to, yeah, let's take her out. Yeah, This is it for her. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, prolactin is actually uh, working in, in uh, male uh, and uh, female body because it's not uh, uh, working, uh, at, it's not at work only while a female um, is pregnant and in postnatal um, period or while breastfeeding. It is actually um, also uh, um, connected with some other metabolisms, for example, metabolism of the liver. So uh, the prolactin, the, the very system of the prolactin production is the same in male and uh, female body, just that during the uh, lactation it is really accumulating. Um, so uh, this is what I was um, yeah, uh, 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 triggering. One of the side effects of this kind of triggering is um, also uh, the production of uh, oxytocin. That's um, uh, another hormone uh, which um, releases uh, only if it's triggered by, for example, um, the breastfeeding uh, action by uh, the mother and also uh, um, uh, it, uh, in the baby. And uh, if one uh, um, uh, would have an orgasm. So one can absolutely know when oxytocin is actually being produced, I tell you. I mean, you all know that probably. So I've been very much, uh, uh, while I was uh, um, submitting myself to this tra training of my pituitary gland, uh, uh, I was also feeling lots of oxytocin, which is actually always working uh, in, in interdependently 
with the hormone uh, prolactin. But uh, okay, when I actually um, passed this first few weeks of um, not being able to concentrate while feeling all this oxytocin, when I was uh, able to, I don't know, like pain this feeling, actually this feeling kind of transcended into the um, um, some kind of an empathy. So I uh, I think that the the richest uh, the the richest um, proof of that would be um, my blog, which is on my website, which I have been writing for the whole time of the process, and I've actually been uh, still uh, I'm still writing it. So. Um, yeah, so this is one thing. And the other is that, um, of course, thinking on the position of uh, motherhood and thinking about the ability that also men could actually lactate, um, it actually brought me um, uh, 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 to, to read also a lot of um, uh, different uh, uh, discourses and theories on, on um, uh, which are of course very old, but uh, anyway, on motherhood versus uh, fatherhood. And here is one uh, by Rosie Braidotti, which uh, who says uh, motherhood has traditionally been uh, considered as an automatic biological process, while fatherhood is seen as a social and cultural uh, institution that rules over and governs biological relations. So I know that um, this is changing very much, but nevertheless, I think that uh, in the very, uh, um, in all the pores of the society, this kind of notion is actually still very much present. And uh, I think that, that I won't say both sexes, all the sexes are actually struggling with this notion very much. So um, I, it was very important for me to start uh, lactating, which I succeeded after about two months. And at the end, after almost three months, which, what I succeeded was actually two to three drops of um, milk that was it i i didn't succeed to to actually make it more uh, because i just came to the level when for example if i would have a baby or if i would uh, want to really i don't know <laughs> force my uh, uh my puppy it would have to really 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 suck a lot and then we would be struggling for about two to three weeks then usually what happens is like really full lactation this is for example what uh, was happening in few cases in mothers who adopted uh, babies uh, which still needed to be which still wanted to be and needed to be um, breastfed so uh, but it's really i think it's really so totally cool that men could also do it i mean uh, I'm absolutely proposing that because I think that would um, uh, discourse on, on also this kind of um, instrumentalism of uh, male body would actually, um, well, definitely bring some um, uh, or accumulate some additional uh, maybe constructive solutions towards the status of uh, parentship, uh, yeah, in general. Um, yeah, and uh, one of the things that also, I mean, it, this is all in very much in a nutshell, but uh, yeah, one of the very interesting phenomena that also happened during this process while uh, being uh, very much isolated with my two dogs. Uh, so. Uh, the new one is um, the almost four months old puppy. Uh, her name is Lady Ada Lovelace. And the other one is uh, my four years old uh, Scottish border collie named Lord Byron. So uh, yeah, this was, a <laughs> they are my absolute inspiration for the art and science, uh, yeah. 
um, which I am trying to compose <laughs> all the time. Um, so what actually also occurred was this, um, what I think occurred was actually dwelling even deeper into the hybrid language we o which we already, uh, of course, have developed. Uh, uh, that hybrid language is, uh, um, I mean, um, being also a part of this hybrid language of the training of the animals is also being, has been actually developing for actually many centuries. Uh, but um, what I am, the hybridity here is actually not only the fact that, okay, the first step would be that um, uh, I would be able to read their body language, the signs of their body to be able to read and to recognize how they are feeling towards me or towards a specific situation. But also, the, of course, um, uh, they also are able to read my sounds and voice and, and body language. So, and also, of course, my, uh, much more probably, uh, also my, um, uh, emotions. Um, so this is this bilingual language we are actually both talking. So it's not. So it's not so much. Also, the whole project. It's not so much about me becoming becoming a dog or dog being my substitute for. Uh, child uh, and therefore dog becoming some kind of a humanized, I don't know, like entity. It's actually about the hybridity. Um, so I, because now I don't feel, I totally feel in between. I don't feel as if I'm still in the group of women who didn't have a child, who haven't been mothers and didn't go through all this uh, process, but yet, of course, I'm totally not in the group of women who had biological uh, child uh, or even non-biological child. So I, I totally feel somewhere in between, and this is really interesting to me. And also to come back to conclude about this uh, hybrid language, what is hybrid here is okay. One is reading the signs and uh, those, and and then reacting to them. That is training, uh, um, training uh, uh, human, training an animal, animal training the human. Absolutely, uh, but it is uh, very institutional, and absolutely, um, both parties need to be able to, to talk this second language. It's not animal and it's also not human. It's really like the second language. But what is actually, what I'm very much interested in is this fine tuning of the relationship, which absolutely takes uh, the, um, a lot of um, their, the emotional, the dynamics of emotional economy is very much present and it is uh, so it's very much present but yet it's very much scientifically unmeasurable but it is there so i'm very much interested in that and uh, uh, so this is a kind of a language that we developed on on top of of the language of the science we, which we both uh, uh, speak. And I'm going to, um, I may not articulate it in human language yet about this hybrid language, but definitely I am going to, in the near future, very much dwell on this semantics uh, and also write about it and publish it. Um, but uh, what I was also thinking is actually that I think that probably this hybrid language between uh, like interspecies hybrid language is actually also probably could be one of the entrances to lead us towards the hybrid ethics and the hybrid ethics could actually be applied to any kind of otherness. That is why I, I really like the, uh, the word otherness, which is also in the title of this uh, whole conference, uh, because we are trying to somehow dwell on, on um, grasping what 
uh, that is and how to understand it. So I think the hybrid ethics actually can, we can apply it to whichever type of otherness, may that be an animal, a plant, a fungi, a slime mold, an Asian face, an a Arab face, a refugee, whoever. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I think I just won the Miss America title. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs>